Hey, God bless you. How are you doing? Uh, sitting here in the sun, doing a bit of gardening this morning and listening to the Bible, listening to the Gospel of Matthew specifically. And uh, obviously this is a series about the devastating things that Jesus said. And I'll just be honest with you, literally everything was devastating. <laughs> I mean, there was so much to talk about. When you actually are listening to it frequently, and he, his spirit reveals more and more to you. I highly recommend listening to the Bible rather than reading it, or as well as reading it, at least. Um, you know, you absorb big chunks of it. And as I'm working, um, you know, I might miss a couple of chapters while I'm over there doing something else. And then I come back to it and I'm, it's a bit like the radio, but it's a, it's a holy thing, right? It's much better for your soul. Um, but one of the things that stood out to me this morning was this uh, lady who obviously felt very remorseful about her life. So much so that she spent an entire year's wages on a bottle of perfume for Jesus, who then said that what she did was a beautiful thing, even though other people thought that it could be, you know, used more wisely or better. Um, he said it was a beautiful thing, what she did. And not only did he say that, but he said that that deed will literally be remembered for the rest of time, if not beyond. Like every time the gospel is preached, he said, what this lady has done will be remembered. What an astounding thing, but also devastating in the sense that in the grand scheme of things, I think people uh, give a hierarchy to what's valuable, what they think is valuable to God. And um, maybe there are some people who would have, well, there were some people who looked at what this lady did, groveling kind of at Jesus' feet in tears um, and then breaking the alabaster jar on his head. And there were, pro there were people there thinking, what a waste. What a, what a stupid thing to do. What, that perfume's worth a lot of money. You could have given that to the poor. What an awful person. You know, like, what a stupid person at the very least. How ignorant, you know, those people think like that. Whereas this deed... Of all the other deeds she may have done, she may have given to the poor afterwards. She may have, I don't know, been in prayer meetings, casting out demons, healing the sick. She may have lived the rest of her life as a, you know, a single woman who had devoted her life to prayer. We don't know, really. But what we do know about her, before any of us see her on Judgment Day and then hopefully heaven, is that she did an amazing thing for Jesus. She anointed him for burial and it was out of a contrite, um, repentant, knowledgeably, you know, repentant heart. She, she knew she had overstepped the line probably many, many times and this was her last chance to bless the one who had saved all our souls if we let him, right? She knew um, that this was a serious moment, not just for him, but for her. How um, beautiful it is that she kind of represents the church in a way. Like if Jesus, you know, is the head of his body, that this lady who, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this, look at this. All these crows chasing a buzzard. Uh, this lady who had, I guess, given everything she had. She probably wasn't a rich person. She might have been, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it. But nevertheless, she gave it all to Jesus in the hope that she might find grace. Isn't that a beautiful picture of the church and how we should be? I think so. Um, only the Lord is the judge on who 
manages to accomplish uh, such uh, such sacrifice. It is a sacrifice, you know. You can have the whole world, apparently, and still forfeit your soul, you know. That's a, a, another devastating thing we need to talk about that Jesus said. All of this is just worth nothing. Just worth nothing in it if you lose your soul. But that lady represents an attitude all of us should have, in my opinion. Uh, may we all have it. May the Lord put a heart like that in all of us, that contrite, you know, humbled, uh, I guess, attitude of knowing that there's literally no hope except to beg at the feet of Jesus and give him all you've got. Give him everything. You know, the poor you can look after whenever you want, but take advantage of any moment that you might have. She took advantage of that moment that, you, you know, she wouldn't have been able to do it afterwards. She would have missed the boat. Uh, even if the... Um, even if her intention was there, her motive was maybe there and the Lord would have known it, she still would have missed that boat and we wouldn't be talking about it right now. Like Jesus said, that moment was caught, kind of on a spiritual camera for the rest of us to glean from and also he wanted to honour her. He honoured her with that. He literally said, everywhere the gospel is preached, we'll talk about it, we're talking about it now. Even if there was a whole ton of other fruit, spiritual fruit she, she made in her life, that was the one God wants to record and talk about for everybody else. So what matters to God, I think is a spiritual lesson, what matters to God may not matter to, to us at the time. And what matters to us may not matter to God. Like Judas got that, I mean, he got it monumentally wrong in every way, really, but... That was another way he got it wrong was he saw that because of his thieving, greedy uh, intentions, uh, saw that as a, uh, you know, a way to give to the poor. And he neglected the beauty of the moment, the spirituality of the moment. And obviously he was the one who instigated the crucifixion, uh, you know, period of time because betraying Jesus with a kiss, uh, with a whole load of people with swords and, and uh, you know, with spears and whatever behind him, having gone to, you know, sell what he thought was Jesus, but was actually his soul. Um, yeah, that was, that was that man's motive, spiritually. And another interesting thing is I was listening to Matthew there, um, everybody was around the t after Jesus said someone's going to betray me everybody was around the table going surely not I Lord surely not I and a lot of people well it wasn't them but it says every disciple said that right surely not I Lord there are tares among us and that's a fact who are they we don't know we have to judge people by their fruit and if you know, we judged Judas by his fruit in that moment, we may not have seen the underlying spiritual deception there. Within 24 hours, I assume, he had betrayed the same Lord and Saviour. He said, surely not I, Lord. You know, he, his motives and intentions have been there for a long time in that way. He wanted to kill Jesus. Uh, whatever reasoning you might give that but ultimately this is about that lady this video is about that lady who did an amazing thing for Jesus and it's a devastating thing for us because do we give it all and that should be an examining question on a daily basis do we give it all and another scripture that came to mind was that you know Matthew 25 he's talking about well if you did this for my brethren, if you went to visit them in prison, if you gave them some food, if you gave them whatever else it was, you, heal, you went to heal them and pray for them or whatever, the least of those brethren, you did it for me. But 
there's the flip side of that. If you didn't do it for the brethren, you didn't do it for me. And we know very clearly, by the way, I don't know how anybody can listen to the Bible and not believe in hell or believe that Jesus believed in hell, at least. It's so clear when you actually li listen to it. It's so clear. Like, who cares about studying the Greek or whatever? Like, it is so explicit that there is a hell and most people will go there, you know? So it's very sobering, devastating in a way, because that woman represents true contrite humility in repentance and the response of the Lord to that. And it also, the, the, I guess the bad guy in the story, like, you know, generally is Judas, right? He represents the attitude that will end up damning people, even if they proclaim a faith. Surely not I, Lord. Surely not I, you know? I would never do that to you. It literally, he literally says that at the end. Everyone else said the same. Peter says it. So he said, well, even if everybody else runs away, I would never do that. And everybody else said the same, right? Yet, you know, Judas went out with, I guess, Jesus's blessing in a way, you know, after Satan enters him, go and do what you've got to do. Go out into the darkness and do what you've got to do. You know, Jesus knew the whole time. He knew there was a devil among them. There's so many devastating implications, so many nuances that you can read from the text if you really study it and analyze it. And I don't, I just feel a lot of the time the church is focused on the wrong things. The, the, you know, who cares about the alarm, Illuminati and what the world is doing? Study the scriptures, it's all there. Everything you need for, for the benefit of your soul is in the scriptures. And okay, lots of people have different interpretations and there are well-studied people in Hebrew and Greek who might tell you different, but just put a Bible on and listen to it in one, you know, the whole thing in one go. Listen to the whole of Matthew or the whole of Corinthians, or, you know, the one and two, you know, just in one go. And I think it will feed your soul as it has fed mine. And actually there's a lot of encouragement in it. And I pray that all of us will find what we're actually looking for. And where better place to look first than where there are the words of eternal life, right? So God bless you and have a great day.